if i uh, talk about what is sustainability sustainability is taking less from the earth and giving more to people we all know that buildings consume 48 percent of the world's energy and uh, you know in dif in different proportions like industry is consuming 31 percent transportation is consuming 12 percent of the energy agriculture is consuming uh, 5 percent and if we look at the india's past the historical past so i want to show how wise our ancestors were you know in this uh, township of mohanjodro in the in the year 2600 bc they designed this township where proper care was taken to design sustainable buildings according to the topography according to the climate according to the wind direction and and it was so smartly designed that even these uh, uh, there was a proper a proper drainage system was there and if we go to rajasthan in the havelis at jaisalmer which are built uh, you know something around 1200 ad you see this uh, intricately uh, woven uh, facade of a haveli it is self shading it is protecting the windows it is uh, uh, shading the windows from rain and sun and dust everything and likewise in the golden period of architecture which was uh, the mughal period uh, architecture has reached almost its peak in perfection and uh, this Taj Mahal, you see, uh, it is one of the seventh wonder. How nicely it was landscaped, how nicely water was utilized. And uh, in the down south, in, in at Orsha, this is a Jahangir Mahal Palace in Orsha. There was a courtyard planning, there were thick walls, there were smaller windows. You know, all these features were there in, in, in the ancient architecture of India. And uh, in the 50s, when uh, Kabuzie came to India, the first thing on reaching India, he asked his team to study the climate of Punjab. He studied the wind direction, he studied the topography of the site, he studied the vegetation and you know this is the open hand monument which revolves like a weathercock, it gives the wind direction. And there are numerous sketches prepared by the Kabuzi's team, which are which are published in a huge volume, uh, you know, in in a, uh, in in foreign books. And uh, while designing Chandigarh's capital complex, there uh, you see this is a high court building where Kabuzi has experimented with double roof, and and you see how nicely the glazing is shielded with a combination of horizontal and vertical louvers and uh, and the building is oriented in a perfect orientation which is the wind direction in Chandigarh. Chandigarh is the only city probably in India where we have 35% open spaces, green spaces whereas in city like Kolkata it is something like 2% and you know with such a rich historical past now what in the middle of 90s we started making buildings designing buildings you see this is the Aba building on the left corner uh, top is a Mohali it's the uh, urban development authority of Punjab and the other one is uh, another building in Gurugram one is, uh, in the lower line is Mumbai and in Bangalore there's no difference when when our today's architects are doing buildings in whether it's a Mumbai or it is a Bangalore no consideration for the climate at all and now we are going to talk what we are supposed to do we always talk about energy efficient buildings so we all know buildings consume energy uh, you know in heating cooling lighting and running all the appliances and energy efficient building is one in which we can reduce the demand for electricity by using efficient appliances or designing the building in a proper manner. And 
in order to understand the whole concept i would like to add that india is uh, is a huge subcontinent and it is divided into five climatic regions so each region has its own parameters to design the buildings one is the top one you can see the jammu kashmir area and parts of himachal pradesh it is called it comes under cold and cloudy region and this uh, you know madhya pradesh punjab haryana and all these areas which are in a lighter uh, golden uh, golden color it's a composite region hot and dry region is uh, rajasthan and uh, parts of gujarat etc uh, you can see this map and warm and humid region is the coastal belt of india which is shaded in a uh, dark uh, golden color and moderate region is a small pocket somewhere near pondicherry these are the climatic regions of india and and when we when we design buildings in these regions uh, we 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 have a, you know this is the uh, first of all we are discussing the composite region which is covering most part of india including madhya pradesh uh these are the design strategies the design mantras to design buildings in this region what are the um, uh, strategies we have to resist heat gain in summer and resist heat loss in winter we have to promote heat loss in summer and in monsoons how we can do it you know the underlines are uh, you know specifying it we can we have to orient the buildings with longer axis in the east and western uh, direction roof insulation and wall, wall insulation is required thicker walls or cavity walls are needed and and to promote heat loss we we are supposed to de design buildings having courtyards or we can have nice arrangement of openings and uh, trees and water ponds also help so these are some of the guidelines and uh, following these guidelines we we happen to design this particular church in chandigarh long back and this church looks very simple but it is one of the 41 energy efficient buildings uh, selected by the ministry of uh, non conventional energy sources by the government of india and in this church you can see the photograph the entire elevation the the vaulted roof is is mainly having light colors to reflect incident sun rays and cavity wall is introduced you can see we we introduced uh, small windows there is adequate light there is adequate ventilation but uh, but the windows are deeply recessed and you can see the plan this cavity wall is running all around and this is the interior during the day time there is ample light inside no artificial lighting is required and now i am going to discuss another church building designed by us in chandigarh this is called church of god this is a building in which you know this picture is taken from the western side you know western side is the most dangerous side climatically because it gives lot it uh, gives lot of heat uh, which goes into the buildings interiors so we have a uh, turned is its a facade in such a manner from the front side that there is no window on the front side there are small slit openings or the windows are placed in such a manner that they are not visible at all so hence thereby the building uh, building remains comparatively much cooler this is the plan form and uh, in addition to that we designed a building which is called bal bhavan in mohali which is a satellite town of chandigarh you know in this building you see the the front side is the western side you know there was a requirement of a huge number of uh, you know large number of toilets i clubbed all the toilets and put all the toilets on the western side why because i thought that toilet will be utilized for only 15 minutes or so so let the western sun heat the toilet portion and let the dormitories remain cooler and the other classrooms and training rooms uh, remains cooler and uh, we retained all the existing trees in the site 
and you can see each window is well protected with a balcony and uh, after this we did a school which is uh, owned by the current chief minister's family it is called Jadvindra public school in Mohali this is the school a competition was held and our, our team was selected just because uh, the guideline of the competition was that only that architect will be selected who will not cut the trees you can see the trees around this project we designed a compact building and fitted it at, at the site so that no tree is allowed to be cut and in addition to that uh, we have shielded our windows and the architectural vocabulary of this uh, school is uh, driven from borrowed from the existing campus which is designed by one of the noted architect of india that was jk chaudhary many people may not be knowing jk chaudhary designed uh, iit delhi he was one of the very famous architects in those times so he designed this uh, uh, school so we were doing extension of this we followed the same architectural vocabulary and uh, no tree was cut and hence this project was given to us and uh, this is the plan of this school you can see we have kept seven meter wide corridor in the middle and uh, seven meter wide corridor is uh, you know having cutouts on either side and these cutouts are you know shielding the classrooms from the noise in the corridor plus it facilitates light and ventilation and you see this cross section you see how the wind moves and there's a skylight at the top of this uh, corridor and there's a uh, bridge sort of a uh, corridor moving inside and it is further connected to each classroom through bridges so there's no noise there's ample ventilation and there's a ample light in the interiors this is how we shielded our windows deep shaded windows with the with a combination of horizontal and vertical louvers and in addition to that we designed a school at uh, chandigarh this is a christian school called a baptist school in this school we we assisted the chandigarh administration because it's a modern school uh, we insisted to the uh, Chandigarh architecture department that we want to have courtyard planning in this project and you know the concerned officer was uh, saying that courtyard is not required in these times and you why don't you go for air conditioning because we are supposed to take conceptual approval from Chandigarh administration to make any building in Chandigarh anyway we prevailed upon him and uh, this is a school where you can see again the windows are properly protected and uh, you can see the plan there, there, there are uh, you know two larger courtyards square shape and two smaller courtyards the this whole building is woven around courtyards and uh, smaller courtyards are covered with the, the polycarbonate sheet and uh, the larger courtyards are kept open as a result the building remains very cool ventilated and no air conditioning is needed and this is one of our award-winning project uh, which we got from Hadko for designing a uh, housing project at Jalandhar and the jury was headed by very famous Indian architect Anant Rajay, late Anant Rajay and uh, we got first prize in India and this is the housing block we have given to the Hadko you can see in this housing block there are earth bombs at the bottom you can see planters in front of windows you can also see um, vertical openings in in the parapet and in addition to that that the tallest tower is is a staircase which is so strategically placed uh, which can suck the hot air from the adjoining rooms and can release it at the top and this is the site plan again having courtyard planning and the thick roof was proposed on this housing you know the like the one in doshi's sangat was used the right picture is is when sangat was under construction <coughs> this is how the ventilation was promoted in the cross section in the housing block 
and uh, after this we have one one uh, convention center project of the agriculture ministry in delhi and uh, the brief of this project was that we are supposed to design a very energy efficient building and you you can notice this uh, roof of this auditorium the roof itself is uh, tilted to the southwestern side and it is it, the roof is the entire roof is made of solar uh, panels and each uh, tree existing in the site was preserved and uh, rain water harvesting was introduced and and um, pervious uh, uh, concrete uh, perforated um, uh, perforated uh, footpaths are uh, created there so that you know we do not damage the environment in any ways and as a result of all these uh, you know parameters and we were given the first prize in this competition and uh, after this we got an opportunity to design uh, hostels for the post graduate students of uh, national institute of technology at uh, kurukshetra in this project you see there is a electricity shortage everywhere light often goes and uh, we opted for a similar parameters it is it is it is a project where we introduced courtyards it, it is a project where we introduced balconies to each uh, each uh, room and each window is uh, thoroughly protected with the uh, properly protected with the uh, horizontal or vertical projections as the case may be and uh, you can see this uh, whole 30 acre complex we designed uh, 12 housing block uh, hostel blocks and uh, three dining halls it's a huge project costing nearly 30 crores and uh, as a result of uh, our efforts uh, the students living there are very happy thermally very feeling very comfortable and uh, then i designed a small uh, nursing home it's a small uh, mano it is called manodisha hospital uh, at barnala and uh, this is the hospital you can see how we protected the windows you can uh, you can see even on the sides from the bottom and because we get a lot of uh, you know um, temperature goes as high as 47 degrees centigrade in Punjab in uh, in uh, summers and a small cutout in the middle and uh, and proper uh, landscaping and you see th these kind of features are introduced so that you know a hospital can be utilized very comfortably by the doctors nurses and patients and uh, this is a very small library uh, which is built in a very very remote village in Punjab this is the library you won't believe the the total cost of the total cost of the total cost of this library was only uh, 12 lakhs and you can see a cooling system placed on uh, cooling system is placed on the roof terrace the cooled air is brought down in the interiors through the ducts and these ducts are built in civil work only and uh, and there was no extra expenditure and you see the book the and the windows on the front elevation they are kept at a height after the height of the book rack because the book rack itself acts as a insulation material and this uh, facade is facing north and south and the, on the eastern and the western side which is the most dangerous sides uh, we have provided cavity walls now you can see this plan you can see these uh, square ducts in the plan four ducts you can see this staircase and this toilet block on the eastern and the western side and north and south side is we are having windows and th these windows are kept at certain height so that uh, book racks are you can see in this plan book racks are placed alongside the walls and uh, 
with this we finish the composite climate category and next category is hot and dry in hot and dry category which is mainly the rajasthan part we are supposed to resist heat gain these are the guidelines for designing buildings in a hot and dry region we have to resist heat gain and we have to promote heat loss and for doing all this for resisting heat gain what we are supposed to do you know uh, we have to follow proper orientation we have to insulate the building we have to provide cavity walls thicker walls you know all the those measures we are supposed to take and to promote heat loss uh, you know we we need lot of ventilation at uh, night time in in uh, in in, uh, in desert areas and uh, we got a opportunity to design a a big housing township for indian military that is married accommodation project for indian military and we made 900 houses in this township and i gave 16 presentations to the army journal to convince them that we have to follow north and south orientation in desert so because the main road was just on the opposite side the army was insisting that we should have housing which is facing the main road so that it is visible from the front road but i i, I have to go to delhi 16 times to convince them that sir you are wrong it will, we, people will not be able to live there if we design the buildings like this ultimately we prevailed and uh, they agreed and this is the housing where you know 99% of the houses are rightly oriented on the northern and uh, facing north and south which is considered to be the best orientation in in a desert and you see all the windows are properly protected deeply protected and we have used light colors in this housing and there are hardly any trees at the site whatever little trees we got there and we preserved them we we opted that we will prepare the master plan in a such a way so that no tree is allowed to be cut and uh, after this we got a chance to design certain buildings in a warm and humid zone of india which is a coastal belt of india and we designed uh, some youth hostels for the ministry of human resources Uh, we did some projects in west bengal some in odisha some in assam and uh, i am just uh, touching four of them and uh, you know in a warm and humid region what uh, what is the main design feature what is the main design guidelines we are basically supposed to increase lot of uh, ventilation in the in the rooms very simple in a very simplest way i would explain that promote lot of ventilation in the interiors and uh, this is the bardwan youth hostel in west bengal you see site was very tight you if you can read the number 4 in the plan number 4 is a dormitory you look at the shape of the dormitory and this dormitory is getting windows from six sides there are six openings in one dormitory you open all of them and uh, you know all all um, uh, people li living inside will feel comfortable because it is very humid and you need lot of ventilation and uh, because you get lot of rainfall there and the pipes normally remain choked and for in government buildings there is no no me mechanism to clean them so we opted to have rain water spouts likewise you can see in this uh, 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 how we have protected the balconies in more uh, when we have lot of rainfall buildings normally get blackened so we we given the co even color of the building is chosen so that it will never get easily blackened and this is a joshipur uh, uh, it's a place in uh, odisha where we happen to design a youth hostel you can see this is the plan form we have opted for a you know octagonal module uh, which becomes a dormitory at the first floor which becomes a dining hall at the ground floor which the same module becomes a a courtyard and <coughs> this is the end product 
again you can see white color is used small windows are used water spouts are used instead of uh, instead of uh, pipes and you see how this uh, building is uh, designed like a beehive and uh, after this uh, we are going to touch the moderate climate moderate climate is one where the climate is not very harsh uh, in comparison to um, other zones and architects can take little more liberty to design the buildings there so i never got any chance to design any building in this particular region uh, so i borrowed two examples from uh, 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 from other architects work a bombay based architect rumi sharaf he is a very dear friend of us uh, he designed corporate office of uh, uh, this bajaj autos this is the corporate office of bajaj autos in pune you see the building it's a beautiful building to my mind he has provided slit openings and light white color and you can see earth berms it's a very nice building climatically according to my way of thinking and uh, you see how natural light is uh, brought in the atrium area and in the corridors avoiding lot of uh, wastage of electricity thereby and uh, after this the last region is a uh, cold and cloudy region you know cold and cloudy region is where we have to follow the reverse guidelines we have to uh, resist heat loss which is totally opposite to what i was talking in the earlier zones we have to promote heat gain and we have to resist heat loss we have to design the buildings in such a manner and Uh, this is a project uh, um, designed by a very famous and renowned architect Ashok B. Lal. Uh, it's a small, very very small cooperative bank at Shimla. You can see the picture. In the facade, front facade, there is a glazing. This glazing is uh, fixed after nearly two feet distance from the original wall, which is a masonry wall. So the the air in between glazing. and the original wall gets heated up with the sunshine and the heated air goes up and the and the uh, and when it goes up it is taken to the interiors through ducts now i will show you the section you see the section how this heated air goes up and the heated air is taken inside the interiors and thereby reducing lot of load on the heating of this particular bank so it was it is a very sensitive design to my mind then we we got a chance to design a composite regional center at shrinagar in jammu and kashmir uh, which falls in cold and cloudy region here the challenge was different when I, when i reached there i was told that uh, you know lot of uh, snow gets accumulated on the roofs they say that uh, you know Uh, neither it's practically possible to mechanically clean it nor it is manually possible to clean it so you know i contacted few people there they 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 advised me to follow a certain degree of uh, uh, roof angle so i uh, i followed it blindly and uh, you know when snow falls the snow automatically goes down no no manual cleaning is required no um, uh, mechanical cleaning is required so that has uh, made the project work very well and uh, the plan form is uh, inspired from uh, hindu sacred symbol swastika and in the middle you know in the central point we have a atrium and uh, these are the cross sections and uh, perspective views of the same building and before i close i will just quickly touch some new technologies you know when we have less area and we want a solar light nowadays these solar trees are available in india and this this is called the solar tree it's a very famous uh, thing nowadays and uh, this is a uh, professor dickson who has uh, floated the concept of, he's an american scientist he has promoted the concept of vertical farming and uh, you see this is the farming being have done in a building itself and uh, a building in new york 
uh, sorry, building in Japan designed by a New York firm in, in the year 2010. You know, this building, the on the external facades, you can see lot of creepers, the fruit bearing creepers. You can see lot of plants inside the building. All the employees, thousands of employees which are working in this nine story building, they, they eat all the fruit they they eat all the you know even the canteen cafeteria in this building is utilizing the vegetables which are being grown here this is a new concept floated by professor dixon you see this is the uh, interior of this uh, building you see they have grown uh, you know this uh, uh, particular crop in uh, in the basement of this building so this is just a demonstrative project that even agriculture can be grown on the buildings now we, we you know there there's a talk of uh, energy generating pavements it is uh, said it is claimed that uh, they they use a 100% recyclable recycled rubber and and in, with the movement of the foot movement of the feet we we can generate energy and after this uh, there, there's a nano technology which is uh, doing a lot of uh, things. We have a nano glass. We have a concrete now which cannot be um, cannot get blackened as we see normally in most of the old buildings of Kabuzie. And uh, this particular building is designed in Bahrain. It's called Bahrain World Trade Center. I have seen this building myself. It, you know, you see two vertical towers about 800 feet tall. You know. In the, uh, they are connected together by three bridges and those three bridges are uh, accommodating three wind turbines and the diameter of one turbine is 95 feet. You can imagine how big it is. And the buildings are oriented in a particular angle to receive maximum uh, wind so that this wind turbine runs. And the architect has claimed that 15% of this building's energy is uh, coming from these three wind turbines and these bridges are being used to maintain these turbines it's it's a noble idea very beautiful concept and uh, these are the close-ups of the same with some other stats this is a 50 story high building and after this nowadays even wind trees are available wind trees are available even in india you see, uh, it is a concept that uh, wind turbines can generate electricity if the if there is an adequate speed of the wind. Desirable speed is there only then you can generate electricity. But nowadays, nowadays they are they are, they are uh, th this wind tree concept is uh, can generate electricity even the even if the speed of wind is as low as about seven kilometers per hour. And this is a close-up of the wind tree. After this, you know, some uh, engineers and architects are experimented, experimenting with the idea of solar towers. You know, when we de design multi-story buildings, the only area left is on the top terrace. And the top terrace is already loaded with the water tanks and uh, so many other um, gadgets and, uh, you know, um, this uh, lift room, etc. So they are toying with the idea whether we can have this uh, uh, sun tracking disc type of um, um, uh, fixtures on the facade which can be automatically operated with sensors. They move like sunflower on the facade and generate many times more electricity from the solar energy. So this is a new concept which is coming in. And uh, these are the details of that. You know, a few years back there was a concept that solar panels can be fixed on a straight roof at a particular angle. But now you see solar panels can be fitted on uh, vaulted roofs, on angular roofs, in any shape. So this is a new uh, developments in the technology of solar panels. After this, uh, this is a building in Germany where the architect has used uh, these projections of the windows which are made of solar panels. You see this black uh, cover, uh, black colors, uh, uh, horizontal lines in the elevation. They uh, basically these are solar panels. 
how innovatively they used it. And in this building in Hong Kong, even the glazing is made of solar panels. This is a Hong Kong building where the whole wall is made of solar panels. This is a very good example from Finland where the architect has used the railings of all the balconies with this particular railing is made of solar panels. And uh, the conclusion of my whole talk is that uh, India is divided into different climatic zones and each zone has its own guidelines and we should follow those guidelines and we should design buildings uh, to save environment, to save Mother Earth and we should not copy the western buildings, the glass clad buildings. By designing glass clad buildings we are doing major harm to the Mother Earth and that is my message. Thank you very much. Thank you.